Okay, so back in October of 2022, I made a video about the newest reboot of the Monster High franchise, which was called Monster High colon the movie. I know, I can hardly believe it myself. And that's really the extent of my knowledge about Monster High, but I got to thinking, which doesn't happen often, but still. I wanted to see how the original Monster High movies were. You know, like the ones that people said were good and they liked when they were kids. Because if there's one thing I've learned over the years, it's that everything from our childhoods totally, definitely holds up. Now, it turns out there are 16 Monster High movies, but the first, like, five or six of them are just, like, TV specials, as in they're 45 minutes long because they're actually just, like, two TV episodes put together, kind of. So I decided to skip those and go to the first feature-length actual, like, movie movie, which is the 2012 cultural reset masterpiece, Monster High, colon, Ghoul's Rule. So come along, kids. Let's take a walk. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Surf Surfshark VPN. Surfshark VPN is an app and browser extension that lets you change your IP address to be pretty much anywhere in the world you want. Now what this means for you is it protects you from websites and other users trying to snoop on what you're doing and from where. Maybe your country has some like weird strict content censoring laws or you just don't want people to potentially hack your accounts. Well, Surfshark VPN can help you with all of that. But it also has a lot of very practical day-to-day -day uses like allowing you to watch the Netflix libraries from almost any country. Fun fact, Slovakia has by far the highest number of movies and TV shows you can watch with over 7,400 titles compared to 5,800 in the U.S. And all you gotta do is just install Surfshark VPN and tell it to put your IP address in Slovakia, and there you go. You have access to an extra 1,600 titles. Or Japan and Taiwan have the biggest anime libraries on Netflix, so using Surfshark VPN, you can have access to all of that. Or in the reverse, if you're traveling away from your country, you want to stay up to date on a certain show you're watching or whatever, you can use Surfshark VPN to put your IP address in your home country, and then wham, bam, 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 there you go. It's quick and easy to sign up and install, and only costs $2.49 per month with a two-year subscription. And so it barely costs you anything, really, and gives you access to all of this. And get this, you can use a single subscription on an unlimited number of devices. So let's say you and four other family members, y'all want to pitch in on one subscription. That means you get all of this for 50 cents a month. So click my link down below and use the promo code Myers. You're going to get three months for free. So click my link and sign up today. Okay, back to the show. Now, unlike the newest reboot movie, the original Monster High movies had Frankie Stein as, like, kind of the main character, having just been created, like, a week or so ago. She's the new kid in school, and she, along with all of us, gets to learn about monsterhoodness ship. Like, Halloween, for example. Sound the alarm! Sound the alarm! Halloween is fast approaching. Yes, Halloween! The one night each year, the human menace sets out on a single mission to capture and torment monsters of all kinds. Led by their vicious monster hunting hero, Van Hellscream. Expert. <laughs> what, what is his face? I thought 2000s Barbie movies were scary. This movie's just coming out swinging. This is kind of like those dare videos about peer pressure or whatever they showed us back in like fifth grade, you know, where it's like, some people will try to pressure you into doing things you don't want to do. Hey, Jennifer, my parents are gone this weekend. Want to come over and fornicate? Anyway, so the whole video is about how Halloween is coming up, and that's bad for monsters because that's the day humans go monster hunting or something like that. But Frankie's a little confused about all this. Halloween is only days away. But... But my magazine said this is a fun time with costumes and candy and- Frankie, these normie magazines are jammed full of lies. Yeah, come on, Frankie, you can't trust anything magazines say. Freaky signs, he's falling for you. Clue number one, he seems distant all of a sudden. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Clue number two, he punches a lot of drywall. What? Even though the normies may seem like they can be trusted, all rules go out the window on Halloween. Who knows what they might be capable of? <laughs> So fast. Yeah, the bell doesn't dismiss you, I dismiss you, and then you'll be late to your next class and somehow it's your fault. Anyway, so then we get introduced to a bunch of characters that I guess we're already like supposed to know. Wait, 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 is this dude just a giant eyeball? Whose idea was this? But the one character we need to know about for this movie is Jackson slash Holt. Watch it, Normie. Well, I'm part monster too, Manny. See? <laughs> I better rock this school while I can! Yeah, yeah, yeah! <sighs> yeah, okay. That was a lot. And then, of course, you meet everyone's favorites, Claudine and Draculaura. Oh, Claudine, I'm so excited! <laughs> Our double date is tonight! Gee, a double date with you, my brother, and some guy I've never met? Don't be so stubborn! It might be fun! Hey, ghouls! Um. Uh, yeah, Mr. Cameraman? What you, what you... What you, what you filming over there, buddy? You know, Monster High Gen 1, like, all the girls had these, like, insane horse legs <laughs> with, like, fishnets and the tiniest miniskirts you've ever seen. Like, what even is this? For a franchise aimed at 10-year-old girls, these characters are, like, just the entire cast of Euphoria. People always used to criticize Barbie for having unrealistic body proportions, but, like, 
<laughs> like, come on. I mean, everyone just looks like if Gumby was even sexier than he already is, you know what I'm saying? Like, even the way they walk, it's like, like, you can tell this is where most of the animation budget went, okay? Anyway, so we flash over to Deuce and Cleo talking about the whole Halloween thing. <laughs> Come on, you don't really believe all that stuff about normies, do you? Uh, yeah, I do. Wait, wait, hold on. Why is Deuce such a giga chad in this movie? In the remake, he was just this, like, sad anime boy in a beanie. Like, like man, they did him real dirty. Also, uh, shout out to all these girls going to school in nine-inch stripper heels. <laughs> like, what the heck kind of kids franchise is this? I mean, girls only dress like this maybe, you know, the first three days of school, right? Before they realize there's nobody there worth impressing, and then it's just sweatpants and crap tops for the next eight months. <laughs> Deuce, my mummy, my daddy, taught me a long time ago that they are not to be trusted. Your dad says lots of stuff, Cleo. Doesn't mean it's true. Oh yeah, well what if 9-11 really was an inside job? Anyway, so while everyone's talking about how bad the humans are, what do you know, someone is already egging the school. So our main characters rush outside to see- Wait, 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 Mr. Cameraman! How many times are you gonna show this girl's feet in this movie? Yeah, so slight spoilers here, but uh, there are so many close-ups of these girls' feet and legs. Like, like, did Dan Schneider make this movie? You know, this whole franchise must have been like a real spring awakening for a lot of young girls, you know, especially since every male character is just the most annoying person you've ever met. Well, I'm part monster too, Manny. I I repeated history once, but that was because I accidentally burned my book. Just, just little 12 year old Sally sitting there watching all the movies like, so these are my dating options for like the rest of my life? Anyway, so some human kids from the other side of town are vandalizing Monster High because dad never came back from buying those cigarettes. And as you might imagine, the monster kids are not too thrilled about all this tomfoolery. They attack us in the broad of daylight. They did? Oh, that really grinds my gears. It's not like it's surprising. They're wrecking our school just like they're wrecking the environment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that was a very long detour to get there, my dude. But yeah, so everyone's on edge. Some kids are getting scared. Some are getting angry. I'd like to see him try it again. I'm sorry. Like, did every guy in the school just hit puberty like three days ago? I'd like to see him try it again. Well, I'm part monster too, Manny. But that was because I accidentally burned my book. Now, in the middle of all this, Spectra, the ghost girl here, which like, okay, okay, slight tangent again, but like this movie has like 35 characters in it. <laughs> and like, I guess we're just supposed to know who they all are. I didn't realize I was watching the Avengers Endgame of kids movies. Anyway, so Spectra says that she found something interesting in the old catacombs beneath the school. So naturally, Frankie goes to check it out by getting help from Operetta, another character who shows up for like four minutes. And like, they go through a maze, they, they cross an old death swamp, and they arrive at the secret, long forgotten Halloween museum room. <laughs> what the heck kind of school is this? This kind of makes Halloween look fun. <laughs> It's like how in Hogwarts, how there's just like, put anything you want in the story, you know? It's like, ah, this is a secret room full of Polly Pockets that only appears when I'd say so. Anyway, so here they all learn that Halloween used to be a day where humans and monsters would be friends and like, share candy and sing Kumbaya or whatever. But over the years, the original meaning was lost, and now humans and monsters hate each other. And Frankie over here wants things to go back to how they used to be. You know, rejecting modernity and embracing tradition. Until Halloween is over, when you are outside of Monster High, please disguise yourselves, hide, do not let anyone know you are a monster. Uh, wait, hide who we are? Headmistress Bloodgood, this goes against everything we've ever been taught at Monster High. Oh, Frankie. Oh, one day you're gonna realize that most of the things you learn in school don't really apply to anything. Or like movies like this, you know, where like there's always a message where it's like, no one is truly evil, they're just misunderstood, and all they really need is a friend. And then you grow up and you're like, mm. Yeah, some people just kind of suck. Look, no one knows this, but Halloween used to be for monsters. So I say it's time we stop being afraid and take back our holiday. <gasps> for all monsters! Yeah. yeah, let's take back Halloween by force! <laughs> well, whoops. Yeah, so Frankie learns the valuable lesson that most people have no critical or nuanced thinking skills whatsoever and it will just go along with whatever someone else says. And now all the other monster kids want to destroy all the human kids so they can celebrate Halloween. Yeah, this is a very high stakes movie. So they sneak over to the human school to do the who knows what, but when they get there, someone has already vandalized it and now everyone's gonna think that the monster kids did it, even though they were totally gonna do that anyway. Hang on a second, somebody beat us to it. Hot dang, they sure did a heath of a job. That's better than we were gonna do! Alright, monsters! Freeze! Stay right where you are! 
Now, of course, the monster kids know that they can't trust the cops, which is weirdly on point for a kids movie from 2012. And so they run away and end up at a normie kids Halloween party to try and like blend in, you know? Mm. You asked for it. Whoa. <laughs> what? <laughs> the heck was that about? Anyway, so like I said, they try to blend into this human Halloween party, but obviously some people are not really buying it. Whoa, <laughs> sick costumes. You guys must really love Halloween. Oh yeah, totally. I don't even recognize you. Um, that's because we're, um, exchange students. How come you're not dressed up, uh... Claire, and this kind of stuff isn't really my thing. Wait, wait, this is her not dressed up? Ah yes, doing the old, uh, try really hard to not be a try hard routine. And besides, like, this girl came to a party wearing jorts? On purpose? I'm only here because my friend Chad made me come. Shut up, you're not my real dad. And if I'm forced to be here, I'm going to at least change the music. These people have no taste. I only listen to real music, like the front butts or thumbtacks in my toenails. Now, in the middle of this party, we meet another special someone who's, like, kind of important, I guess. These guys that trashed our school! Now presenting the most famous monster hunter of all time! Tis I! Lilith Van Hellscream. Van Hellscream? Van Hellscream? Wait a minute. Isn't that the person they mentioned in the old video from the beginning of the movie? So this girl gets to talking about how she wants Halloween to go back to being about torturing monster kids and somehow has like no self-awareness about being the bad guy in this situation. But right then, Heath, the prepubescent fire guy, eats something spicy which makes fire erupt on his head. Which, to be fair, like, same thing happens to me every time, but but it, but it, it comes out of somewhere else. And he runs into Frankie and her hand flies off. And everyone's starting to think that these kids might be a little different. He's a real monster, not a costume. Oh, come on. You don't know that for sure. I mean, what high school doesn't have at least a couple kids like this, you know? Who among us has never lost a hand in the punch bowl? That's how you know it's a good party. So the cops show up again, and everyone gets away, except for this guy. But hey, it's fine. Don't worry about it, because he can turn back into a human just by, like, not listening to music or something. I don't know. Like, his whole thing makes no sense to me. Anyway, so the cop lets him out of jail, and he gets sent to the human high school. Just no effort to call his parents. No ID check. You know, policeman of the year, this guy. I tell you what. But would you believe Sir Dorkington over here? Uh, is not really any cooler at the human school either. Yeah, still got that new kid smell. What should we do to him first? If it isn't Tweedle Dumb and Tweedle Dumber. Whoa, the chess club gets to use the gym after school? What? No way! Way. No way! Way. So long story short, everyone is concerned about Holt, and rumors are circulating that he's the one who's been vandalizing the human school and doing all these Halloween shenanigans. And Cleo, if you can believe this, okay, she doesn't like the fact that the spotlight is not on her anymore, so she finds a way to make herself the main character. I just received an email from Holt! What? He is behind all these pranks on the normies, and that he will be communicating through me. Cleo, you rock! You tell Holt that we're all behind him! He's treating normies like they treat the ozone layer! <laughs> what? What? How did you... This is like trying to talk to one of those crypto bros about literally anything. Anyway, back at the human school, Holt accidentally hears some music and turns into whatever he's supposed to be. Like every other monster makes total sense, right? Werewolf, homunculus, vampire, Australian. Don't be such a fraidy catfish. But like, what even is this dude supposed to be? My superpower is being obnoxious. Anyway, so his true identity gets found out and he's arrested once again by the cops and now they're gonna do something they call the trick or treatment. At dusk on Halloween night, we shall all join together and haul this creature to the top of the hill, where he will be given the trick-or-treatment. So horrible, it hasn't been used on a monster in 200 years! But of course, you know, being the kind of movie that this is, like, it, it just means they're gonna, like, what, bury him in a giant barrel of Werther's Originals or something? He can only eat vanilla Tootsie Rolls, a.k.a. the worst candy ever invented. Actually, the trick-or-treatment is, uh, <clears throat> let me see here. They clamp him to a wooden board, and then a machine slowly rips his head off. What?! <laughs> this is a movie for ten-year-olds. What the heck is this? Now seeing this, the Van Hellscream girl from earlier suddenly realizes that things are getting very real and very serious because guess what? She's the one who's actually been vandalizing the human school the whole time. You see, turns out she's actually not a bad guy, okay? She just wanted the monsters to get blamed for everything so she and her friends could, you know, hunt them down and torture them for fun. Well, sounds like someone just needs a friend. And also, the one who's been spreading the rumors about Holt was Cleo the whole time because she just wanted attention. But all the same, it's finally time to come clean and tell the truth. I just wanted things to go back to the way they were in the good old days, and I was tired of being treated like a second-class citizen. We don't want Holt to get the trick-or-treatment. You can do whatever you want to us. Don't care. Holt did it. 
They did it. Doesn't matter. Those people out there demand justice. This movie is <laughs> weirdly poignant in 2023. And so the monster kids team up with Van Hellscream and her friends to save Holt by pulling the classic Spartacus move. Help! The monster's got me! Monster attack! Go stop that dirty monster! The same exact thing is happening to me! I'm Spartacus! I'm Radio Rebel! And then the rest of the humans chase the monster kids all the way down to the catacombs and into the special Halloween room, where Frankie and friends tell them all what Halloween is really about, apparently. We have the same hopes. The same fears. The same dreams. The same drama. The same insecurities. The same fantasy about being kidnapped and then we both fall in love with each other and then he has to pretend to kill me so I can run away from my rich overbearing father but then there's a bounty hunter who's also looking for me and, and of course he's super hot too and his mission is to rescue me but he can't bring himself to kill the kidnapper guy because he's also in love with me and he knows it would hurt my feelings if he did that and oh golly gee which one do I choose? Just me, huh? Really? Well, what's your fantasy? Some guy named Connor who actually owns a bed frame? Hmm, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. And then centuries of hatred and socioeconomic imbalance are completely wiped away and everyone's best friends now because they do a dance together. Now, while all this is happening, the B story of the movie is Draculaura trying to get Claudine a boyfriend because Claudine's like too introverted or something. I don't want to talk about it, okay? Well, I was only trying to help you. Well, maybe you need to mind your own business. What's wrong? My so-called friend won't let me live my life. I don't need to change anything, okay? I'm perfectly happy. You ever notice how it's always about teaching the introverts to just become different people? Are you too introverted? Well, here's five tips to be more outgoing. But like, it never goes the other way. Are you too much of an extrovert and can't stop annoying everyone around you? Here's five tips on how to leave us alone and freaking shut up. But all the same, that's pretty much the end of the movie. So like, the Disney Channel Zombies trilogy just like totally ripped these movies off, didn't they? <laughs> I will say though, as with any older 3D movie, like the animation is really strange sometimes, except of course the sexy model catwalk that every girl does just <laughs> going down the hallway. But one positive thing I can say about this movie is like they actually do a lot of really interesting camera angles. Like this movie could have just been very flat and straight on like a lot of earlier 3D movies were, but they really put like a lot of effort into some of these shots. Like it's surprisingly well storyboarded for this movie for tweens that was made just to sell toys, you know? But anyway, there's like 15 more of these movies. So let me know in the comments if I should do more and which ones you'd like to see me do in the future. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell. Leave a like, leave a comment, all that stuff. Send me an email at alexmyerscontact at gmail.com and let me know what movies or TV shows you think I should check out next. And above all, let's everybody have a great day and I'll see you all next time.